Hey guys, it's uh, Key here from Kegland. I'm just doing a quick video on these Ice Master G40s. Uh, we're starting to sell quite a lot of these uh, over the years. And I guess uh, it was time to do a, a video on this, this model in particular because we've done a number of uh, different upgrades uh, on these. Um, yeah, it's a very popular unit, which historically we used to sell almost exclusively to a lot of bars and cafes and stuff like that and small ven venues which want to have a glycol, glycol chiller to run like one or two tap systems. Typically that would be the most popular reason to, to put them in. Um, however, we're also starting to get some home brewers use them for chilling down fermenters and that type of thing too. So uh, we have started to make some changes to the ice banks to suit home brewers. Uh, you know, I know some people have the uh, SS Brutech uh, fermenters which are glycol chilled or they've got some other grandfather type fermenters which are glycol chilled and stuff like that. And um, yeah, we've just customized this to suit those types of customers. Um, so yeah, firstly, uh, yeah, some people call this a, an ice bank chiller uh, or you can call it a glycol chiller. At the end of the day, they're both the same thing. Um, the only difference between an ice bank and a glycol chiller is one, you put glycol inside the tank and then with the, uh, with the ice bank chiller, it essentially develops a bank of ice around the outside of the unit and that acts like a cooling reserve. So it, you know, during peak periods, let's say half time at a football game or something like that, You've got this bank of ice you can draw from and it, it, it means that you've got a little bit more capacity. But anyway, um, yeah, I'll uh, more or less show you the inside of it so you can see if you look into the top of the unit there, you can see there's a, there's a, there's a reservoir and you can actually see the, uh, the copper tubing in there and that copper tubing is a refrigeration line so you get your, your uh, refrigeration uh, gas running through there and uh, that's what the ice forms around. Uh, on the top of the unit here you've got an impeller pump uh, so that basically agitates the, uh, the coolant inside the unit, um, but it also pumps as well. So um, another change we've made on this, uh, the, these new designs, uh, the G40.1, I guess you might call them, is the inputs and outputs are larger and we use a larger hosing. So you get slightly higher flow through the pump. So yeah, this pump will pump, um, there's a few different specs of the different pumps we've got, but this pump will, will pump enough liquid that you can cool down um, your, your glycol chill fonts and stuff like that and get your fonts to ice up and, uh, and that business. We've also uh, basically upgraded the handles as well. We've got some really heavy duty handles here. So I know some people who are taking these to events and stuff like that might find that was a nice little feature. Um, yeah, and the other thing we've upgraded as well is on the back of the unit here, and this is sort of one of the important things for a lot of the guys who are using this to chill down fermenters. Um, so on the back of the unit, you'll see there's a half inch thread just under this cap. So if you just undo that brass cap there, you can see we've got a half inch BSP thread here. So uh, the reason why we've put that there is this drains from the bottom of the tank. And historically, uh, what we did used to see a little bit of is people using this impeller pump on top of the unit to pump their glycol coolant out of these inputs, or out of the input, out of the output here, and then in through the fermenter and then back into the input here. But one of the problems with that is if you're using this impeller pump and you're plugging in various different fermenters and stuff like that, and you're often unplugging, uh, plugging in and unplugging fermenters, you can sometimes get a little bit of a loss or spillage of your uh, glycol uh, coolant. And as soon as that happens, uh, then the level inside the tank drops a little bit and these impeller pumps only draw from the top couple of inches. So um, if your glycol changes a little bit, then your pump will no longer be drawing liquid and you might be thinking you're, you know, you're, you're, you're circulating glycol through your fermenter, but actually you're not. Um, so yeah, due to the fact that these impeller pumps are sensitive to some degree of level change inside the tank, really if you want to use these for chilling fermenters, would recommend people to use the, um, the port on the back here. So basically that's this one. So you'd hook up an external pump uh, and then you can suck from the bottom of the tank. Uh, you can use as a drainage as well. So if you want to drain the whole tank out for some reason, but yeah, you'll draw from the bottom of the tank if you want to chill a fermenter. So that's definitely something which, uh, yeah, we want to especially point out with these new units, just because we're getting so much call for that type of thing. Um, yeah, the, uh, uh, the other thing is, which I should probably explain, the unit comes with four product lines. Uh, with that said, um, if you're in a hot country like Australia, we'd really recommend people to only get two product lines out of these. Um, so in other words, uh, if you've got your, you know, your beer, your keg sitting here, for instance, behind the bar, the beer would come out of that keg, go into uh, one of these product lines, they're all numbered across the top, so you can see one, two, three, four, so it goes in number four, comes out four the other side. Um, and with one pass through, it'll drop something like about 15, 20 degrees Celsius or something like that. But obviously if your ambient temperature is quite hot and your beer is quite hot, 
um, you may need to pass it, like double the lines up. Definitely in Australia, we'd always recommend doing that. If you're in a cold country, maybe you live in, I don't know, Norway or Sweden or something like that, probably you don't need to worry too much about it. Maybe one pass through is enough for you. Um, but yeah, definitely for anybody uh, in Australia, you would recommend actually putting your beer through. So it comes in in number four, comes out, no, out of number four on the other side, and then goes into one of the other loops. So it means out of four loops, you'd only get two actual uh, product lines. Uh, so that's uh, definitely something uh, a bit important to point out. Um, yeah, this is the overflow tube. We sometimes get asked what that's for. So let's say using this as an ice bank, you fill it up with water. Obviously, once you start freezing, the, uh, the, the ice uh, expands by about 10% because um, ice is obviously less dense than water. And then um, you end up with a little bit of overflow. So some people might actually want to join some silicon tube or some vinyl tube or something like that. So that, that goes off to your, uh, your nearest drain. Uh, look, if you're if you're not often topping the unit up, which you probably won't be, then look, you may not even end up you know, plumbing that to a drainer or whatever. Um, now, the unit I uh, should also explain the wiring. Um, uh, yeah, the impeller pump on top has a separate plug. So there's two ways that you can plug this in. Um, when you undo this uh, IC plug, you can either go through this uh, hole through the side of the unit, and then this can plug into the base of the unit. So if you do that. What will happen is this power point, this IC power point, which is on the body of the unit, that will cycle on with the compressor. So as the compressor cycles on, then the uh, impeller pump will cycle on. However, probably most people using this or most people wanting to chill their fonts down at the bar or whatever, they'd probably leave the impeller pump running 24 seven. So the, the main reason we've wired up like this so is you can do that. However, most people would use the uh, included IC power cord and plug this into a power point. And then um, if you're plugging this into a power point, uh, you can leave it running 24 seven. Or for instance, if you wanted to uh, save a bit of power, maybe overnight, you don't need to chill your fonts and have your fonts all iced up, you know, 24 seven, you could probably turn them off from like two in the morning till, you know, maybe 10 in the, 10, 10 in the morning the next day or something like that. So uh, yeah, you might want to plug the pump into a separate timer. And that's the reason why there's two cords. Some people get a bit confused about that when we first send these units out. Um, yeah, then you've got another IEC power cord, which is to plug into the other IEC power socket just on the back here. So it just plugs into a, you know, any other normal power socket. Um, yeah, another very small uh, change that we've made as well is you'll notice the inputs and outputs this is a very subtle change, but we've actually put score marks uh, on these eight millimeter stainless steel tubes which run in and out of the unit. And the reason why we've put those score marks is we're starting to get into a new range of push-in fittings. Previously on some of the older units, we would only really recommend people use the stainless steel um, compression fittings and they were a bit time consuming to, to, if you're doing a lot of these, it can be a bit time consuming to plumb up. So now we've got little score marks on here. So you can just use these uh, push-in fittings like that. So this is an eight millimeter push-in fitting. Um, these can be really handy. In the past, uh, we've been very reluctant to really push push-in fittings, I guess, but now we're starting to bring out these new push-in fittings with double O-ring seals in there. They're really quite a reliable push-in fitting. So um, that's something which now we're recommending to customers to go this way. You just push it on like that. And then you've got an eight mil OD beer line and then just push that in the other side like that. So, and away you go. So it's really, really easy to plumb that up. Um, anyway, that's look more, more or less it with regards to these Ice Master G40s. Um, yeah, if you've got any other questions, just let us know. They're, they're definitely a great little unit. Um, you know, they're probably one of the best value ice bank uh, glycol chillers in Australia, I would say, by a country mile. Um, and yeah, they're really well built, powerful uh, compressor. The compressor is uh, about a 300 watt compressor and has a cooling capacity of about a one kilowatt. That's also something that's probably worth pointing out as well. A lot of people will state the, the compressor wattage on the sides of the unit, but then there's also the cooling capacity wattage as well. So this has approximately one kilowatt worth of cooling capacity, so it can pump about one kilowatt of heat out of a keg, for instance, out of uh, the beer running through it. Um, however, the compressor itself is only a few hundred watts. So yeah, that's just one thing to point out, just in case you're comparing spec sheets between this and another unit. Um, anyway, that's uh, pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any other questions, uh, yeah, just uh, flick, us, uh, flick us an email, um, or you can just make a comment underneath uh, of this video. Cheers, thanks.